Hey everybody, what's going on? Chris here. I get a lot of questions about the whole firearm and the alcohol within the RV. So right now I'm going to call a police officer. He is based out of Indiana. Granted, I know each state is different from, from you know state to state in terms of their alcohol and firearms. But just as a base, I think I can interview this police officer and get just a basic feel for how police officers interpret RVs versus cars with alcohol and maybe some things that might help you in the future and also might help me in the future in terms of uh, carrying both in my vehicle but uh, but yeah I just wanted to uh, to ask you a couple questions for the uh, for the channel because a lot of people always ask me on there in terms of uh, having alcohol in your RV versus your car and I've heard a lot of back and forth in terms of how um, legally the RV once it's parked and in a spot it's technically a, a residence is is that true or how how does that work well um, I guess it just depends on the, the context of what or why you want to consider it a residence um, if you are for instance if you go to a campground and you park the RV then obviously it becomes your temporary home Mm -hmm. just as if you were camping and alcohol would be permitted in the RV there shouldn't be any issue with that each state is different regarding their individual laws but once it's parked so if you're saying I guess you're saying like park in a Walmart parking lot type of deal and then it becomes a residence is that what you mean? yeah I mean because for example a lot of people on my channel they um and I think RVers in general, some nights we may stay at a Walmart or a truck stop just because we're on a way to a destination and we've traveled 200 miles for the day. And then at, at the end of the day, we get the laptop out and start watching a movie with a glass of wine. You know, I'm, I'm sure like the odds are of a police officer actually needing to come into the vehicle or asking you anything at a truck, truck stop or Walmart, slim to none. But if that situation arose, say, for example, if you're at a Walmart, you ask permission from the manager like you're supposed to, but the city ordinance is you're not supposed to park it within the city and a cop comes to your RV, like just how that situation would play out with, with the rights. And again, each state's different, but I mean, and, and you're like, for, for you personally, if you were in that situation, like how, how would that be handled? RVing in Indiana is, is essentially camping. Um, so anything from the driver's seat back is essentially a camper. Um, and if you are in the camper portion of an RV and you have permission from Walmart or the truck stop to park there, um, that's going to be your sleeping quarters. That is the camping portion of it. If you wanted to sit down on your computer and have a glass of wine, for me, if I was to handle that situation, as long as you're not operating the RV on a roadway and that's where you plan on staying, then that's pretty much the extent of it. Like I said, it's camping. But yeah. Essentially. So what if what if a situation arose where, say, a miscommunication came from the person in the RV from whatever establishment they're parking, or if they were parking somewhere and the establishment said they had to move, and say the uh, the RV already had a beer or a glass of wine and is not able to drive the RV. I mean, this is very theoretical, but in situations for me personally, when I've been kind of stealth camping in Walmart or whatever, I haven't had anything to drink at all, just because just I know I have to move. Like, just, just, just in case I have to move. But, but what, if, what if something happened where somebody had to move? How, how do you think that would be handled? Well, it's just like, um, you know, if, if, somebody, if somebody goes to a bar, and they drive their vehicle to a bar. And at the end of the night, the bar has a policy that says there's not a single vehicle allowed to be in the parking lot for whatever reason, maybe an event the next day or whatever reason. They say there's not, there's not supposed to be any vehicles left in the parking lot. So if you drink, uh, you need to find an alternate means to remove the vehicle. If you can't legally move the vehicle, that property owner can then tow your vehicle to wherever they want to tow it to. Um, in bigger cities, they have impound companies where they'll just tow it to a tow lot until you are sober enough to go get that vehicle. And that falls back on the, the RVer in that 
if they feel they might have to move the vehicle, they might have to move the RV, then they need to do it responsibly in a way where they're not going to be too, too intoxicated to where they can't move it, if that makes sense. Absolutely. So moving into the, uh, the the firearm part, and this is the one that's very tricky, because I know some states, for example, I've heard stories of uh, people driving through New York State, and they have very strict laws there where they get pulled over and they have a, a firearm that's completely legal in other states, and they just were driving through and wasn't aware of it, and then they have a felony from there on out. Um, in, the, in the state of Indiana, again, everybody watching the, the video... Um, they may be in different jurisdictions, but in Indiana, um, how does it work in terms of firearms within RVs? Do they have to be in a locked, like the ammunition and firearm has to be separate in a locked box, like they both have separate boxes locked, or how does that work in the state of Indiana? If you, are you talking about a person with a permit in particular or a person without a permit? I'm thinking more along the lines, because I know a lot of people in, uh, in in RVs that I've talked to personally, I mean, this might be different from other people, but for me, the people that I've talked to, they have long rifles and shotguns, um, not necessarily pistols. So I, I guess okay. the, the question should be reframed, how is that in terms, say, if somebody has a pistol versus somebody with a long firearm, such as a rifle or shotgun? Indiana, in particular, does not have a statute regarding uh, long rifles and shotguns in vehicles. Uh, we have particular statutes on handguns and items that are defined as a handgun. Um, and typically it comes down to barrel length, what defines a long rifle and a shotgun from a handgun. Um, but Indiana itself does not have a statute regarding shotguns and rifles. Um, typically, with a handgun, if you don't have a concealed carry permit and you're traveling through the state of Indiana, the handgun has to be stored where the ammunition is separate from the firearm and neither one of them are readily accessible by a driver or um, even a passenger who can access it for the driver. Um, I would say in the safest scenario, um, if you were to travel with firearms in an RV, uh, put them in a place that is far from um, the driver, the passenger, or anything it might uh, be hazardous to, uh, obviously unloaded, but, um, but there's not a particular statute in Indiana regarding long rifles and shotguns. In other states, though, uh, for instance, if I was traveling through Indiana to uh, Illinois or even through Illinois, Illinois does have specific statutes, if I remember correctly, on all firearms. Uh, and that is that unless you have a concealed carry permit in Illinois, the ammunition has to be separate from the firearm, and I'm, I think there even has to be a locked device on the firearm itself. Really? Yeah. But don't quote me on Illinois laws. Um, I know there's a there's a lot more strict uh, statutes there, especially in Cook County, Chicago. Absolutely. Um, but uh, I know I've told people in the past that they're going through Illinois and they don't have a permit for Illinois. Uh, they should separate the ammunition from the firearm and not make it accessible from the driver's seat. That covers everything. Um, really do appreciate you uh, taking the time to 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 do the video because I get asked probably out of, out of all the comments and everything. I think once out of every day somebody's asking me about alcohol and uh, and firearms and RVs because. You know, the, the alcohol thing, once people park, they have a few beers, and then if something happens, they have to move, or what's the legal thing where if they walk inside their door holding an open container in a vehicle, you know, like where right. where that trickiness comes into play. And especially with firearms, a lot of people on, on my channel in particular, they uh, do the boondocking where they go out to BLM land or just kind of out in the, the wilderness without anybody around so they have protection with them. But a lot of them don't even know the actual laws. They just have it there because they know they need the protection, and they're not breaking any laws. They just have the weapons with them, you know. Or they, right. they're, they're yeah. not they're not going to break any laws that bring police officers out there. I guess I should say. Right, right. Uh, the best thing I can suggest is uh, plan your travel into the states that you're going into uh, as best you can, and if those laws are what is important to you, um, then obviously find out what the law 
laws in that state regarding carrying a firearm in a vehicle and then obviously alcohol. Um, that's pretty well standard around the country, but um, mostly just the firearms since each state is a little bit different. Yeah, so how, if somebody was looking for uh, for that information, would they just call, like if, for example, we're in Alabama right now, we're going to be going into Louisiana next. Would I call a local police station in Louisiana, or would I just go online to Google? Like, how? Wh what would be the best source? I know online, you know, you might get information from one place, and then, you know, it might be different. Is, is it is it better to contact law enforcement directly with that? Um, it can be. Um, well, my suggestion would be, typically, if you're on one of the major interstates, you're going to run into the welcome center. Um, and even though, I mean, you might run into a small town as soon as you come through on uh, whatever highway you might be on, um, you can absolutely just look up whatever the local police department is uh, and ask them uh, what the law is in that state. Somebody may be able to tell you over the phone and they have to have an officer call you directly uh, to see what is legal in that state. Online, uh, typically anything that ends in .gov is going to be one of your best resources. Um, Indiana.gov, IN.gov has, uh, you can go through into the legislation section and find all of our statutes. Um, and you can type in some keywords, you know, firearms, shotgun, whatever it might be. Okay. Um, and they will, it'll kind of direct you to the statute that's guided uh, for those. Um, but you should be able to do that for every state. Like I said, a welcome center, you may be able to find some information at a welcome center. Um, and even a phone number to contact if you have questions about those state laws. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. I think we got everything covered there. And um, that was definitely very educational for me in general, and I think everybody uh, watching as well. Thank you very much, Mike. No problem. We'll call you back anytime. Alrighty, sir. Appreciate it. I'll catch you, catch you later.